This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. Credit where credit is due. No one in the camera industry is thinking as clearly, nor innovating as usefully, as Sony. Nobody. Especially when it comes to lenses. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and as is my want these days, I will make this brief because I understand precisely what I'm seeing, although before I do that, this. We are out here along the East River in New York, scouting locations for our next Streets of New York Photography Workshop coming up this May 3rd through 6th. It's a wonderful combination of classroom instruction, peer review in a very supportive environment, wonderful people, and getting you out on the streets, the greatest city in the world for the genre. Space is limited. There is an early bird discount up until March 1st. So if you're interested, please hop over to www.3bmep.com slash streets24. In the meantime, Claudia and I have some more location scouting to do. Back to today's announcement of Sony's 24 to 50 millimeter F 2.8G. Simply put, with this 24 to 50 G only zoom, I'm inclined to call it a G Wiz lens because it is actually sharper than Sony's first generation 24 to 70 2.8 G Master. Sony has redefined my worldview, anyway, of what constitutes the ideal street travel general purpose or even standard Holy Trinity zoom event lens. Claudia feels the same way. Mounted on her 61 megapixel A7CR, she told me repeatedly, which is not like her, that this is a killer street kit. As sharp as it gets for all practical purposes, as shallow as it needs to be in the real world from urban landscape to street portrait, Smaller, lighter, and less obtrusive than her second generation 24 to 72.8 G Master, and more versatile than her 35mm F1.4 G Master. The thing of it is, Claudia gets to play with everything I do. She really has quite a broad base from which to speak, and she generally doesn't care about gear the way so many of us do. She only cares about results. Although, she does care about futzing, so as always, she leaves it to me to set up her camera, actually explain what I've done because I know her preferences, and then she's off to the races. Even before we headed out for a couple of days of shooting, she had concluded that she didn't need the 24 to 70 or her 35G Masters and left both of them at home, bringing only her second gen 7200 2.8G Master and using the 24 to 50 to cover the 35mm field of view 
the A7CR's megapixels to plug the field of view gap to 70 millimeters at the risk of being repetitive. What is it, two minutes in, three minutes in? I'm already beginning to sum up the entire video here. Claudia and I are in complete agreement that there simply is no other camera and lens combination out there for these genres that can do as much as well with as much flexibility for the size, weight, and price. Consider this. This new 24-52.8G Wiz is a 37% lighter, 44% smaller, and price hadn't been confirmed as I record this, so call it about 48% less expensive than our 24-72.8G Master II. 10% lighter, 16% smaller, if 9% more expensive, same caveat, than the awesome little 20-70 F4G, which I have to say does have a very real advantage over the 24-50 at the wide end. C. 16% lighter, 7% smaller, and 8% less expensive than our 35 1.4 G Master, which is kind of interesting. And D. 31% heavier, 24% larger, but only 9% more expensive than a pairing of Sony's 24 2.8 and 50mm f2.5 regular Gs. Although no lens changes to worry about and every focal length from 24 to 50 at full 61 megapixel resolution with superior image quality. None of which is to suggest that it's the best for everyone. You know the drill, different strokes for different folks, your mileage may vary, that's fine. Hold that thought. Nor that it is inexpensive. The lens itself is for its mundane focal range. Kind of expensive actually. It's somewhere between, again, not quite sure at time of recording between $1,100 and $1,300, and together with an A7CR would set you back a touch over four grand. There are many other ways to skin the cat for much less and still be happy. Nor that this is the first zoom to offer this kind of outside the classic 24 to 72.8 Holy Trinity standard zoom range, although no one's done it quite like this. Think, for example, Panasonic's $600 Lumix 20 to 60 3.5 to f5.6, or more directly because it is available in Sony E mount, Tamron's $700 17 to 50 f4 di3 VXD. Beyond Unmatched image quality, constant maximum aperture and versatility, I should add, Claudia carried this combo for hours on end on the street with no bag of any kind, barely feeling it at all. There will be some of us, no doubt, who will insist on a faster maximum aperture for even greater creative control. We both understand. While the maximum aperture of f2.8 matches Holy Trinity zooms, and will be seen as a big deal to others of us relative to f4 or variable aperture competitors, it does not match even consumer grade 1.8 primes for speed or shallow depth of field, never mind high end 1.4s or 1.2s. But here's where Sony is brilliant. So what? Sony knows, I assume, that for 99% of us, 99% of the time, this doesn't matter at all, while other things like sharpness, chromatic aberration correction, focus breathing, size and weight, and the sensor behind the lens, paired with ever-improving computational imaging, matter a whole lot more. Here's why. A. You need deeper depth of field most of the time than what superfast primes can give you wide open, say, for tip of nose to back of ear sharpness at 50 millimeter portraits. B, you don't need shallowest depth of field, call it 99% of the time for 99% of us when shooting landscapes or large group photos at the wide end of 24 millimeters. C, you don't need a 1.2, 1.4, or even f2 today to allow for higher shutter speeds to capture movement in low light. This can be done simply by spooling up the ISO and or by relying on IBIS to prevent your own movement getting in the way of your shot. When Kodachrome first came out, for example, it was rated at ASA 8. This is the equivalent of today's ISO, ISO 8. When Kodak introduced Kodachrome 2 in 1961, 
it was rated at a, oh baby, ASA 25. I've never shot on the streets of New York in the digital era higher than ISO 12,800, but that is already nine stops faster than what the pros could do with Kodachrome 2 with far wider dynamic range and higher resolution. D, even if you insist upon super fast high-end primes, they are often bigger, heavier, and more expensive. Yet with only one or two exceptions, like Sony's 51.4 and 1.2G Masters, optically inferior wide open relative to this particular 24 to 50 zoom. And uh, E? E. Perhaps most importantly, one can argue that this focal range, which corresponds to the new normal to 2x or 3x telephoto fields of view popularized by smartphones, is the gateway drug to dedicated cameras for the iPhone Android generation. Sans computational imaging, and cognizant of the fact that while the main sensor on something like my iPhone 14 Pro is 48 megapixels in raw mode, the sensors behind the 0.5 ultra wide and 3x telephoto lenses are only 12 megapixels. The three lens sensor units offer full frame equivalent depths of field of f6.2, f13.6, and f23.8, respectively. This 24-52.8 full-frame lens is backed by a full 61-megapixel capture when mated to the A7CR, A7R5 across every focal length with a constant 2.8 aperture and far superior dynamic range and low-light sensitivity and noise performance to boot. Put differently, it smokes the very best smartphones and will for years, which is a pretty good reason for upgrading. It is also the case that while we give up the smartphone's ultra-wide full-frame equivalent field of view of a 13mm lens, the A7CR or C2 or COG interchangeable lens camera body now becomes the gateway drug to other Sony lenses. 14mm f1.8 G Master, anybody? 135 1.8 G Master? Maybe start with a less expensive 85, maybe used. Although the downside in all of this no fault of the lens itself, is that compared to a smartphone's user interface and user experience, Sony's menu system and the physical controls continue on pretty much as Rube Goldberg-esque as one could imagine, as much as they have ever been, taken together reminding me of nothing actually, so much as a stalagmite, an accretion of drippings built atop software, going back to a prehistoric time in camera years anyway, before there were digital cameras, going all the way back to Casio calculators in the 1970s, and then moving forward to drip upon ugly drip with Nintendo Game Boys in the 1980s, Sony Playstations in the early 1990s, Microsoft Xbox consoles in the early 2000 aughts, rather than any kind of thoughtful clean sheet approach to this complexity. Although, this is an industry-wide phenomenon in need of a serious rethink for as long as we've had general release digital cameras, don't get me started. But that is not the point of this review. This is. Claudia and I are gobsmacked by this lens in combination with Sony's A7 series, most especially the A7CR, the best at what it does in the business, irrespective of price. I said that out loud. Full stop. Period. The end. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics, and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code HUE at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace.
If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That's a big one and an easy one because it's free and more than two thirds of you don't. And or join the conversation in the comments section below because this is an exceptionally knowledgeable and generous audience. If you want to learn more about our street photography workshops, streets of New York, streets of Paris, Berlin, or Tokyo, custom private photo walks in New York City only, or want to explore private Zoom sessions for portfolio reviews, gear selection, and the like, no travel required, hop over to www.3bmep.com. Finally, please consider supporting our work by joining us here on YouTube purchasing official three blind men and an elephant swag, dropping us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially by becoming a patron over on Patreon, all links down below. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.